Hey everyone, it's Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts here, and this is my long overdue review of the Dell Mini 10. Uh, I should have done this video a few weeks ago, lots of reasons why it didn't happen. There's my apology, let's get right into it. So, the Dell Mini 10, how is it as a netbook? I would say uh, quite good. Um, one of the things that uh, I really liked about the Dell Mini 10 um, was actually just the color offerings. I mean, there's not a lot of other netbooks out there that come in different colors. I mean, uh, the uh, Acer Aspire 1 does, but the uh, HP Mini 1000, the basic model, only comes in you know one color. So it's really cool that Dell offered um, some different color options. Um, what else is... What, the other thing that's quite interesting is um, the fact that the Dell Mini 10 has continued to um, evolve. So when I bought this notebook, which was um, just a little bit over a month ago, it was about six weeks ago, um, I bought basically the best that I could, you know, in terms of every, every conceivable option. Uh, since Dell first offered this Mini 10, they've uh, upgraded what they're offering. So one of the things they upgraded is actually the battery. So this is a, a, a three cell battery and Dell now offers a six cell battery. Now I haven't seen the six cell battery. Uh, it's about a $40 upgrade. Um, I think that's on Dell Canada, so you'd have to double check what it is on Dell USA or your particular country. Uh, but it goes from being a three cell battery to being a six cell battery, which essentially would double uh, the runtime of the battery. Now in this instance, um, I'm going to assume that the six cell battery you know, uh, comes out the back, so it would kind of hump out, and it may raise the profile uh, a little bit you know, this way. Difficult to say, but I really uh, like the fact that Dell has a six cell battery. Where uh, on the flip side, the HP Mini 1000, it has a six cell battery, but um, on it, and I'm just gonna show it to you here, on it, uh, the six cell battery actually comes out the bottom solely because HP sort of put the battery a little bit in the middle here. The six cell battery humps out you know, the bottom and creates this weird kind of stand. So the HP Mini 1000 isn't so good with a six cell battery in my opinion, but I think the Dell one would be a little bit better. Uh, another thing they, they offered, and this is actually a, a really big deal, is they offer a higher resolution screen. Uh, so it's 1366 by 768, so that's a essentially a 720p screen, a sli slightly higher than 720p. Uh, that is a uh, $50 option that Dell offers. Now, netbooks, um because they tend to have fairly low resolution, you know, 20, 1024 by 600 in the case of the Dell Mini 10 here, because it's widescreen, it's 1024 by 576 if memory serves. Um, that means that, you know, not all web pages are actually going to fit on the screen. You got to do the old F11 trick in Internet Explorer to make things a little bit bigger. And uh, so I really, really like the fact that Dell is offering a higher resolution screen. So what's kind of interesting is that I think that if I were to reorder the Dell Mini 10 today, and I were to get the six cell battery and the higher resolution uh, screen, I might have a slightly uh, better opinion about it because it would be uh, a unique offering. As it stands today, the Dell Mini 10, uh, in terms of what I have here, is you know very very similar to the HP Mini 1000, the MSI Win, you know, etc. Uh, and so it's it it doesn't stand out as much as it would with those extra additions. So anyway, enough about that. Let's get into some of um, my tests. So I tested the battery. So like I said, I have the three cell battery here. What I did was I cranked up the brightness to 100%, and I did what I call the sort of typing surfing test, where basically I had the uh, Wi-Fi on, I had WordPad open and I would just you know copy and paste paragraphs and uh, essentially uh, the, the, the machine sort of stayed on and I was sort of simulating uh, user uh, continual user input um, and the battery lasted two hours and 30 minutes over three different tests that was the average so two hours and 30 minutes not bad at all not awesome but but pretty good and again if you were to put the six cell battery on that, you would probably more or less double your battery time. So you'd be looking at about five hours, which is actually fantastic battery life. So the Dell Mini 10 with the three cell battery, it doesn't stand out, um, but it's not, it's not horrible either. That's, that's about average, you know, for this type of, uh, this type of netbook. Now, let me uh, open it up here. I'll wait for it to boot. Now you can see everything in the reflection. Um, okay, so. Just log on here. Now, one of the things that I, I had to get used to, and this isn't a showstopper, but it is something to be aware of, is the fact that Dell used, um, uh, essentially the buttons are part of the touchpad. So if you're like me and you have a tendency to maybe, you know, rest your thumb on one of the buttons and then use the touchpad, it, it can be kind of difficult because what I found was that, you know, if my finger was touching the touchpad in any way, uh, it would cancel out the, um, 
what I was trying to do with my main finger. So I had to sort of train myself to, uh, you know, leave leave my thumb or my other fingers off the touchpad and sort of do everything with my pointer finger. It's not a big deal, but it is something to be aware of. And frankly, I would have preferred it. I think of Dell used just you know kind of regular buttons or even the left right you know vertical buttons. But you know there it is. Um, one of the things that Dell did with this notebook. Uh, and again, this is a, a, one of the negatives. It's not a huge showstopper, but it's kind of silly. This just, I think, points out Dell's poor attention to detail uh, when it comes to their software. And I've mentioned this before. Um, when I click the Start button, um, you will see... Oh, actually, it's not happening now. Wasn't well, that quirky? Um, every other time I did this, there was a little pop-up warning that came up, and it basically uh, said that um, the icons were too big to fit on the screen. So I imagine if I added another one here, um, that that would actually happen. So I'm just going to... Um maybe fire up one quick thing here. In terms of performance, uh, the unit is pretty much exactly what you'd expect with from the 1.6 gigahertz um, Atom processor. Okay, it's not happening. Anyway, let's just forget I forget I said that. Um, in terms of performance from video file playback, I can't really show you um, these video files because uh, of YouTube, for YouTube copyright reasons. Um, but the one thing I, I will show, uh, actually I'm going to fire up a trailer here. I'm pretty sure YouTube would be okay with the trailer. So this is the latest version of VLC. Um, it's version 0 0.99 I think and I'll show you something kind of Kind of weird. We'll, we'll, we'll see if it actually works. Yeah, see this sort of flickering down here uh, at the bottom? Uh, it's some sort of a video driver issue. And I saw video driver issues quite a bit when I was testing this notebook. Just weird little glitches, things that didn't quite work right. Um, and as, as far as I know, Dell hasn't issued a video driver update. So that's something to be aware of. Now, this, this machine um, uses, I believe it's, I believe it's the uh, an Intel um, GMA 500 um, GPU, and that particular um, that particular graphics card, I've read that it it, it has driver issues in general. Uh, supposedly, it wasn't actually fully developed by Intel, and so Intel doesn't do drivers for it. I I have no idea if that's true, but in general, I will just say that this particular um, netbook, yeah, here it is, uh, the Graphics Media Accelerator 500, so the GMA 500. So this netbook with the GMA 500, unlike pretty much every other netbook out there that has the GMA 950, this netbook had some weird, you know, kind of um, video playback issues that, that I hadn't really seen before. So hopefully this is something that Dell, you know, can iron out um, over the next few months with some driver updates and possibly uh, BIOS updates, but it's something to um, be aware of. The other thing I noticed with video files, and I'll just open this up, probably won't really be able to see this, but in general, I found the video scaling, you know, in terms of the way that um, the images appeared on the screen when they, when they were scaled to fit this resolution, I saw a lot of issues um, with uh, the quality um, of the images, um, the way that it scaled, you know, uh, the lines looked really jagged, so it just, again, uh, I don't want to dwell anymore on this issue, but if one of your primary goals is, you know, to uh, watch, watch videos or watch, you know, ripped DVDs, on this uh, Dell Mini 10, I might steer you towards another netbook, something that uses the GMA 950, uh, because I have not seen those problems with any other netbook out there, and um, I'm not entirely sure why the Dell, why this particular Dell has that problem. Um, in terms of everything else, uh, it's 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 pretty good. I mean. Um, uh, the, the, Keyboard, keyboard is great. It has, you know, uh, a good sized shift key on the left and on the right. So if you're a touch typist, you'll be right at home on the keyboard. I mentioned some of the issues with the uh, mouse pad, but overall, you know, pretty good. Uh, the build quality of the Dell is fantastic. You know, it feels really good. It's not creaky. It's not cheap looking uh, like some of the other, you know, um, um, Acer units or even the MSI Wind, I think, you know, it looks cheaper than this. So uh, it's a really, you know, well-built product. Um, it has a 160 gig hard drive. Um, for some people, the lack of the ability to upgrade the RAM is actually going to be a showstopper. It comes with one gig and it cannot be upgraded to two gigs. So that may be an issue for you, you know, if you're um, interested in upgrading the RAM. Uh, now, it does come with um, Windows XP Home, and this is um, service pack three, essentially, you know, after you uh, do the latest upgrade. Although, if memory serves, I think it actually ships with SP3. So, um, 
Windows XP works pretty good with a gig of RAM. Um, I would say for the average person, you're not really going to run into uh, any any problems um, if you only have a gig of RAM. If, however, you're planning on you know upgrading it, maybe you want to hack and toss it, you know, install OS X or something that requires more RAM, um, you should be aware of that. Now, the Dell Mini Nine. Uh, can be upgraded really easily with an extra gig of RAM. So I know a, a friend of mine actually went for a Dell Mini 9 instead of the Dell, Dell Mini 10 because he wanted to be able to put two gigs of RAM in there. So that is something to be aware of. However, if you're going to be, you know, browsing the web and doing word processing and, you know, just doing all, all the basic stuff that netbooks are good for, uh, one gig of RAM is, is, is going to be sufficient. And interestingly enough, Windows 7 runs also actually quite well on one gig of RAM. Vista, not so much, but Windows 7, which is uh, rumored to be coming out later on uh, in 2009, closer to uh, Christmas time is what I've read, um, it runs, um, you know, pretty good on on a gig of RAM but again if you know you want to upgrade that is something to um, be aware of uh, someone had asked about the webcam and so I'll just kind of fire this up here so here's the webcam hey that's me how's it going uh, webcam is pretty average it's definitely better than the HP mini 1000 but it's not you know particularly fantastic but you know pretty good for um, for a webcam um, I did not get Bluetooth in this laptop, and that's kind of one of the weird mysteries. I could have sworn that I checked the box when I ordered it to have Bluetooth, but when it arrived, it didn't have Bluetooth. Uh, another member of the Digital Home Thoughts forums actually reported exactly the same thing. He said that he had record, he had requested Bluetooth, he checked off the box, and it arrived without Bluetooth. So I don't know if there was some sort of weird... I'm not a big believer in conspiracy theories, but it's really strange to have two people say exactly the same thing. But at any rate, Bluetooth, if I did have it on this, would be relatively standard. Um, the laptop doesn't come, you know, with, with too much junk. It comes with um, Norton Internet Security. This is uh, Norton 360. And so you can see the big subscribe now because my 30-day trial was up. Normally, I would, you know, get kind of grumpy about Norton Internet Security being pre-installed. If I had my way, it wouldn't be. But... The, the new Norton 360 or Norton 2009, I think is what it's officially called, it is uh, really, really high performance. Uh, it, the, the, way, the speed at which it scans is a lot better than uh, previous versions, and so having this on there isn't such a big deal, although you know I would actually prefer if it, if it didn't come with it. But like a lot of Dell laptops, what you usually end up having to do is you know uh, wipe it out and do a, uh, a fresh install. Now, because I know I'm going to get asked this question, I'll just reiterate, there is no optical drive. So on the left and on the right, there is no optical drive. So if you do need a CD, you know, a DVD drive, you need to buy a USB external drive. Uh, I shot a video of a great little Samsung drive that I, that I like quite a bit. And uh, it's also good that the Dell has two USB ports because uh, one of the things about my HP Mini 1000 is that it has two USB ports, but one is on one side, the other is on the other side, and that makes it quite difficult uh, you know, to adequately uh, plug in the drive. I have to use like an extension cable. So it's really cool that Dell did this. Um, this does have an HDMI output port, but because it's not very good at video playback, uh, in general, and because netbooks aren't very good at video playback, you know, you're gonna you're, if you're gonna do this, you're gonna hook it up to uh, a monitor essentially and use it, you know, with an external keyboard. You're not gonna want to hook this up to your big screen TV, and you're not gonna be able to play back, you know, high de high definition video. I can definitely see netbooks evolving in that direction, but for right now, this HDMI port is really just a hook up to an external external monitor or maybe um, a projector. So that's about it for right now on, in terms of my opinion about the Dell Mini 10. I'm going to point out one last thing, and that is um, Dell recently announced something called the Dell, the Dell Mini 10 V. You know, V for victory, Victor, whatever. Um, the Dell Mini 10 V is, it looks like it's, it's more, more like a, a cheaper version of the Mini 10. The base price is less than the Mini 10. It has the GMA, the GMA 950, so it actually has that better graphics card, and by better I mean just simply more compatible with things, and it only has a 120 gig hard drive as opposed to this unit which has a 160 gig hard drive. So if you're looking for something a little bit um, different, like maybe you, you want the size of the screen but you don't need the bigger hard drive and you want to save some money, you can check out the Mini 10V. Um, other than the um, 
the graphics card, the uh, hard drive, and the fact that you can't select the higher resolution screen. That's the other thing. The, the, the 10V um, limits you to uh, the, the screen resolution that I have here, which is 1024 by 576. You cannot get that uh, higher definition 720p um, resolution on the 10V, but the 10V is definitely worth considering uh, if you, you know, again, want to uh, save some money. So uh, that's about it for right now. I will um, wrap up here. Overall, I would I would give this this netbook I would say maybe about a seven out of ten. Um, for my money, I still prefer the HP Mini 1000. Um, it's a little bit smaller, and again, I, I just I, I didn't have those weird compatibility issues um, with it, you know, and if Dell can fix those issues, I think that um, this would be an even better netbook, but just all those weird video playback thing, uh, those playback bugs, as an owner, they would they would bug me, you know, so it's something, something to be aware of. Um, the HP Mini 1000 is also slightly smaller, um, you know, but... Uh, I've mentioned this before, I don't like the finish and I totally dig being able to get, you know, cherry red finish on the Mini 10 and Dell has all these cool stickers up now so you can really, you know, customize and make this netbook, uh, you know, kind of your own and I really, really like the fact that uh, Dell did that. So. There we go, I'm done. Um, I decided that I was only gonna post this video on YouTube, which is why it ended up being um, nearly twice as long as most of my other videos, but I wanted to give you guys you know, as much information about the Mini 10 as I could. So once again, this has been Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts. If you have any questions um, that have not been you know, answered elsewhere, feel free to post them and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.